Hi everybody. In this video, I would like to talk about separating verbal from nonverbal communication when analyzing romantic relationships. So, I am thinking about two different parts also of romantic relationships. One part would be initiation, like starting a romantic relationship. And the other part would be maintaining, you know, uh, like keeping a relationship going, just, you know, the part of a relationship. So why is this even important? Why would people, you know, take an interest in this idea? Well, it does seem, just looking at examples, that if you have nonverbal and verbal communication, what that is is with verbal communication, you basically cannot... Um, not communicate, so to speak. In other words, no matter what you do, even if you don't say anything, you are always communicating non-verbally because your very presence, you know, just the sight of you, uh, communicates. But with verbal communication, you can be communicating sometimes and other times not communicating. The idea here, though, is either one alone would seem to be insufficient both to maintain and also to initiate a romantic relationship. But in a sense, they are inseparable, but not completely. Because when you study something, you can't separate the verbal from the nonverbal. Well, I suppose you could have a spoken recording, so that would be completely verbal. But actually, that's not true, because nonverbal communication includes uh, paralanguage. And what paralanguage is, is how things are said. So you actually cannot even, unless it's in writing, but then writing isn't really, I mean, writing is communicating, but then maybe you could say how things are written would be more of it, but I don't know. So anyway, though, um, even if you had a spoken recording, how things are said uh, has something to do with the nonverbal angle of the communication. But let's get back to a relationship. So I said the two are inseparable. You can't just have nonverbal, you can't just, you shouldn't just analyze probably nonverbal and verbal alone. They all sort of go together, or certainly verbal communication has to have some nonverbal communication in it. But you can obviously have nonverbal communication without verbal communication. If you're just standing around or moving your body or, you know, doing something like that, that would be nonverbal. And that is, I would say, purely nonverbal. So let's say, while you cannot separate, um, you cannot have exclusively verbal communication, I guess you can have exclusively nonverbal communication, and that's an interesting idea. So you can't separate verbal communication into being purely verbal communication, but you can separate out the nonverbal. And that's interesting. Or at least I would tentatively think that what I said is true. But let's get back to why this is important, at least in my opinion. So... Let's take an example of why I think verbal communication, why, why I think studying the two separately is important. Uh, and I don't really think I'm qualified to talk about the maintenance of a relationship as much as I want to talk about the initiation. So let's say I'm trying to initiate a romantic relationship. And I'm not saying anything. I'm just standing around or doing things. Maybe I'm just dancing or, you know, at a live concert or something. And some women are dancing with me that I don't even know. Uh, I've never known before that concert or something, you know. But that's that's actually nonverbal unless we begin to speak. Or at least one of us, you know, somebody begins to talk. But And that often does happen. Um... I would say it's generally expected that you're eventually going to say something if you're dancing long enough. Um, but 
The other thing, though, is, you know, if you are just a voice speaking, like I said, you cannot really have purely verbal communication because there's always paralanguage. But even if you did, if you were just standing there, how much could you separate out? So if you're just talking and not doing anything else, just standing there talking, how can that be very interesting? You obviously want to use your body and put your influence, your nonverbal influence into the communication. But there's something else more, and that is to think that um hope I didn't hope I could grasp this and express it to you. Um if you are just talking Oh yeah. But here's why I'm thinking about this. So if you don't say something how well can you initiate a relationship? Probably not very well. At some point, verbal communication, the ability to speak well and effectively in the pursuit of romance, uh, becomes very, very important, I think. And so we need to actually be speaking. We cannot just dance or dance to the music or, you know, just stand around and express ourselves with our bodies alone without speaking. We need to actually be speaking and also we need to be getting uh you know verbal feedback i would think you can't just speak and not and not be you know getting some talk back in response so it seems that verbal communication is very very important but it's not just verbal communication it's how it's done which is brings in the nonverbal like uh paralanguage which i mentioned but also you know how you move your body and use your body to express yourself while you're talking just you everything you do but even so what you say is very important and also the timing which is again nonverbal like the timing and just many other things about it you know and how you say something so why i want to separate these is because of the importance of verbal communication in, in the initiation of romance because if we didn't talk I think we would tend to usually get nowhere if we were trying to initiate a romantic relationship. So, I actually think there's a lot to be said, like I have been talking about, uh, a lot to be said about um, the two, verbal and nonverbal, but also, why would you not think that the talking is very, very important, right? So what you say and how you say it, the timing when you say it, you know, and also the nonverbal that goes along with it, you know, like where are you standing, what are you doing, how are you presenting yourself uh, overall or, you know, also nonverbally, this can be very, very important. So I guess I want to talk about studying maybe just the importance of verbal communication in the initiation of romantic relationships and more. But there's a lot more to it because you don't just talk about words, you know, you talk about everything. So, and in a bigger, bigger picture, you know, if I were just talking about the initiation of romance and, you know, leave leave that idea of separating nonverbal and verbal communication out of it, just talking about just talk about initiation, right? So how do you initiate a relationship? Well, a lot of it maybe has to do with the setting. Like, where are you? Are you at a sporting event? Are you a spectator? Are you a participant? Or are you at a, you know, somewhere where, like at a university where you're meeting classmates or instructors? Or are you at, um, are you at a... Uh, live concert, you know, and maybe you're dancing with people and maybe there's, you know, a lot of fun going on or what are you doing? Where are you meeting your people? So the setting has something to do with it, maybe what brings people together, but also um, just other things like, uh, you know, maybe you could meet in a store like you're standing around waiting in line or just shopping and seeing somebody in the aisle. Of course, you don't want to harass people, but You've got to find out, and that's another topic, how do you initiate without harassing somebody? How do you know if you're, you know, if you're 
attempts at initiation will be accepted or if they're going to be seen as harassment. Maybe the workplace is a place to meet people. So anyway, I'm going to cut this off and uh, have a look at it and see uh, where I'm going with this. Thank you.